The life of Gabrielle Perry has benefited from second chances that all began when she was born and given up for adoption. I am the birth child of a woman who was incarcerated and that was the story of how I came to be into this world. The woman with that bright <laughs> smile learned firsthand about second chances by watching her adoptive father, Thurman Perry, run his Louisiana lawn care business. And they don't make men like my daddy no more. The only people that he hired were the men from the local jail. They were from the prison work release program. He never treated them any differently. Did he do that because he wanted to give them a second chance? I believe so. In my heart, I really do. Mr. Perry died before he could see his daughter go to LSU. But in your personal life back home, they were foreclosing on your family home. Your mom was sick. I mean, it was just everything was falling apart and desperation led to a lot of poor choices. While in college, she got arrested. I had taken money uh, that I did not earn from my work study job. I got caught, of course, and immediately confessed to it. She was charged with 27 felonies. And even though she paid the money back, she had to face Judge Bo Higginbotham. He just was so kind to me. And he asked me um, if I was ready to go back to school. It was almost like it was a collaboration. Like we were just having a meeting about my future. I feel like I was meeting with an advisor and this was the judge on my criminal case. And <laughs> there was just so much humanity in that moment. And it really changed the trajectory of my entire life. Wow. <laughs> wow. The judge decided not to give her jail time. And that was another second chance. Dear Judge Higginbotham. It meant so much to her that she wrote him a letter. I stood before you just about seven years ago as a first time nonviolent offender. When you called my case, you were incredibly kind to me. Your decision to not punish me saved my life. And because of that, I get to go save other people's lives now too. In deep sincerity, Gabrielle Angelique Perry. <laughs> oh my God, hi. Ms. Perry, how are you? It's nice to see you again, sir. I didn't think they would bother you with this. No, they're not bothering me at all. I keep your letter on my desk every single day. It gives me inspiration to do what I do every single day. He took her to his chambers to show her he wasn't <laughs> kidding. I took a lot of care in making that letter. <laughs> I really just never thought that it even got to you. I, 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 I just sent it because I felt like... And sitting right here. Even after the judge showed mercy to her, she struggled. We are in the place that I was homeless the longest. Bathing in a bucket, walking three miles a day to work. That was her life, she says, for nearly three months after her arrest. My peers, my sorority sisters, everyone kind of just led the charge in just isolating me. And that experience gave definition to what has become her passion project, the Thurman Perry Foundation, named for her daddy. The foundation gives financial assistance and essential public health resources to women and girls impacted by incarceration. My education saved my life. Being able to educate women and girls is not just a nicety, it's a public health measure, it's a public safety measure. And that leads us to Tamika Starks, the first of more than a dozen incarcerated women to get a $1,000 scholarship from the Perry Foundation. They had never met until this moment inside the Louisiana women's okay. prison. It's okay, we're here together. <laughs> it's a moment. You just look exactly like all your pictures, and I keep all your letters, and yeah. I just, yeah. and I'm just so happy. Yeah, I'm happy to see you, and I'm grateful for the work that you do. You are giving us ladies a voice. So there's purpose in the pain, there's purpose in the opposition, there's purpose in your tears. <laughs> We are very, very grateful. Starks is serving a 20-year sentence for manslaughter. What is your story about how you came to be here? Well, I came to be here through domestic violence. I remember calling the police multiple times, and I also called the domestic violence hotline a couple times, and I was told to get a dog. A dog. To get a dog. So in the moment, instead of running away, I ran towards him, and I shot my husband. And he died. 
So in awarding a scholarship to her, what is your hope? Essentially, women who are incarcerated, they're erased. I want to be able to give them a sense of dignity and to be able to give them a sense of purpose. Just as Judge Higginbotham gave to her. Your decision not to punish me has definitely reverberated. We have a scholarship program, especially, which is honestly a direct result of you letting me go back to school. I got to pull myself and my mom out of poverty. I got to, I got to be somebody. Well, I played a very minor role in this. You are the person that played, did everything. But in fact, he empowered her to go on to get three degrees including a Master's of Public Health in Epidemiology. She is now a 29-year-old epidemiologist studying infectious diseases. A lot of us move through life and people are nice to us, but it doesn't stop us and give us pause. What is it about kindness that gives you such pause? There's been such a lack of it. There's such a lack of it in the world in general. It's like you forfeit that by having crossed through a jail cell. It's like you are no longer worthy of that. And I don't believe that. And so when someone is kind to you, it has the ability to literally change the trajectory of your life. I'm living proof of that. Mm. Oh, wow. wow. There are so many layers to that so, story, David Begnum. I don't even know where to begin. The Judge Higginbotham, wow. Wasn't it cool bringing the two of them? Yes. Yeah. By the way, the very judge very didn't very remember the moment seven years ago, but when oh. we called and said, hey, listen, would you, we're bringing her, could she read the letter in your courtroom? He said, I got to meet her. It's been on my desk. And sure enough, for two years, it has sat in the corner that of his That says desk. something about him, though. I love when she said it was like talking to a counselor as opposed to the judge right. who was supposed to sentence her in the case. Yeah. And, you know, when we talk about the public health resources, Mm -hmm. She provides feminine products to the women's prison in Louisiana. And it was really the Orleans Parish Sheriff who first took a chance on her because she said, listen, women need organic feminine products, not yep. this stuff out of the machine that have, you know, strips in it that, that aren't particularly safe, right? Mm -hmm. And so they believed in her, they bet on her, and now every quarter she delivers these to women in the prison system. And so... It really just shows that you know, people who have a record, who committed a crime, yeah. Yeah. they are not what they did on their worst day mm. yes. with their worst decision. There's so much more. Yeah, and on top of that, individuals that have an opportunity have influence on somebody's life and can change that. Yeah. Send them in the wrong direction saying, no, you are your mistakes. Or just like Judge, he saw say, something, Nate. You know what? You are not your mistake. Yes. I'm not only going to get out your way and let you go forward, I'm going to lend you a helping hand and encourage you and speak that into your heart. That something. is an incredible Can I just say story. something about Gabrielle's hair? I uh, love her hair. Pretty fabulous. When I was a little kid, if I wore it like that, my grandmother would say, girl, go comb your hair. <laughs> now, that's an actual hairdo. My daughter yeah. wears her hair like that. A lot of people do, and it's just really striking. Loud and proud. Gorgeous. I love it. I yes, am, me too. I am so fascinated by a single moment of kindness and what it has the potential to do. Yeah, no me too. About change this woman's